Um, so I am Kel, and I am talking to you today from Bimini, the Bahamas. I am Dolphin Communication Project's Bimini Research Manager, and monitoring the chat and assisting with tech is Dr. Nicole, our postdoc. Um, she spends lots of time here in Bimini with me as well. And today we're going to focus on um, just a light introduction to some of the dolphin species out there in the ocean. So just a reminder to submit your questions to the chat function um, and we can do questions along the way or at the end. Um, so as you submit those questions to the chat, Nicole will keep a log of them and then we will uh, ask them and answer them. So first off, before we get into dolphins specifically, what is a species? Um, we should probably know that before we go any further. Uh, so Generally, a species is defined as a group of organisms that can successfully reproduce. So for most science books, that successful reproduction, it means that not only can the initial offspring be created, but that offspring can also reproduce. So one of the classic examples is up here on the screen, a donkey and a horse. Donkeys and horses are different species, but they can reproduce. They can have their own offspring, a hybrid, and that hybrid offspring is called a mule. So if a donkey and a horse can make a mule, shouldn't that mean they're actually the same species? Well, nope, because even though they can reproduce and create a mule, almost all mules are sterile. So that means that a mule and a mule cannot reproduce. So donkeys and horses actually do still fit the definition of being two different species. So for the rest of this talk, we're going to focus on dolphin species, and we're going to be talking about species with that kind of classic definition in mind. Um, so that traditional definition. But Keep in mind, especially if you're a young person listening, this might change over time. So check back in 20, 30, 50 years. Maybe scientists will have changed the definition of species, or maybe they will have changed how they categorize dolphins. So now that we know what a species is, how many dolphin species are there in the world? And so another way to ask this is how many members are in the family Delphinidae? 200, 21, 37, 94. And keep in mind, this answer is based on the classification used by the Society for Marine Mammalogy. And SMM recognizes 37 members of the family Delphinidae, 37 dolphin species. And this doesn't include river or freshwater dolphins, and it doesn't include porpoises. So before we get into any more, um, I'm going to share with you, so you may wanna have your volume handy um, in case this uh, is louder to you than it is to me. But this is the dolphin species song uh, recorded by DCP's Justin Gregg years ago. So even some of this has changed with new information, uh, but let's have a listen. And kids in particular, if you wanna try and memorize this song, uh, you could submit your own recording of it to our social media and uh, have a little friendly competition going there. So here it is. Spinner spotted southern right whale, northern right whale bottlenose, and Hector's Rizos, Fraser striped, and Doe Pacific bottlenose. The humpback comes in maybe three or four or even five species, but there are many more than these, so pay attention, please. La Plata, Ganges, Indus, Amazon, and the Takushi too. These are the dolphins that live in freshwater rivers. Yes, it's true. The Baiji once was on the list, but now it's gone. It don't exist. Pollution made it disappear. It will be very sorely Miss Beluga's not a dolphin, but I thought I'd name it anyway. And white beak dolphins have a white beak, which is why they're named that way. And Commerce and he named a dolphin heavy side. He named one too. Whoops. Sorry, everybody. Let me try and fix that. 
Where did we get? It's not a dolphin, but I thought I'd name it anyway. And white beak dolphins have a white beak, which is why they're named that way. In commerce, and he named a dolphin heavy side. He named one too. If you're a famous scientist, those are the things they let you do. The long fin pilot whale is not a whale, no, it's a dolphin too. The short fin pilot whale has slightly shorter fins, oh yes, it's true. The melon-headed whale does not have melons for a head, and it's a dolphin, not a whale. I hope I'm not confusing you. They call the orca killer whale, though it's a dolphin like the rest. There's climbing rough tooth hourglass and dusky, I like them the best. The Irrawaddy dolphin swims in rivers and the ocean. It's a quite uncommon notion to this fact I can attest. Long and short be common dolphin, Hector's peels in black. Oh my, Pacific and Atlantic, white side in and striped in Maui's kind. There's false and pygmy killer whale, Australian snuffins, the new guy. And now I think I've named them all, so next time I think you should try. So there's your challenge uh, to memorize that and uh, make any modern corrections as time goes on. Um, so now the long awaited dolphin species. And this is a worksheet that we have online. We just added it to our kids science activities. Um, it's a worksheet where you can choose your favorite dolphin or a dolphin that you want to learn the most about. And you can fill out information about the animal, uh, draw or insert a photograph, some fun facts, keep uh, cut shade in its range, where is it found? And so if you already have this printed out or on your tablet to work on, you can start filling it out during today's talk, or you can access it afterwards as an additional assignment. And if you don't already have it, um, this is where you can find it at dolphincommunicationproject.org. Look under the education tab and you'll find the kids science activities with a bunch of free PDFs for you to download um, and share however you'd like. So another quiz, what is the largest dolphin species? So who is the largest member of the Delphinidae family? The harbor porpoise, the killer whale, the bottlenose dolphin, or the humpback dolphin? Your guess is we're trying to trick you. And as the song said, it is the killer whale. And the killer whale is actually a member of the dolphin family. But how? Is a dolphin a whale? It is. So here's the riddle to help you remember. All dolphins are whales, but not all whales are dolphins. Let's look at this a little more carefully. So if you think about how dolphins are classified, how scientists classify them taxonomically, they're vertebrates, just like us. They're mammals, just like us. And they're all in the order Cetacea, which is also known as cetaceans, which means whales. So just like every cetacean is also a mammal, every mammal is a vertebrate, well, everything below is also a cetacean, is also a whale. So within this order cetacea, within the order that is all the whales, we have toothed whales and we have baleen whales. And within the toothed whales is where we find the dolphins, family Delphinidae. And here is where we have that 37 or so recognized dolphin species, including the bottlenose dolphins and the Atlantic spotted dolphins. So let's get back to that biggest dolphin, the killer whale or the orca. So yes, this is the largest member of the dolphin family and it's probably the most distinct looking too, huh? Um, it might be the fastest member of the dolphin family as well and it is the longest lived. So stepping back from dolphins for a minute, who has a pet dog? Or who has a friend who has a pet dog? And we're all quite familiar with domesticated dogs and there are all sorts of different breeds, but they're all part of the same species. But if you think about the size of different breeds and how long you might expect that dog to live, what do you find? Who's likely to live longer if everything goes okay? 
a little chihuahua, or a huge Great Dane? Ideas? So generally speaking, or the rule of thumb, is that the smaller the dog breed, the longer it lives. So a chihuahua will probably live longer than a Great Dane. Well, for dolphins at the species level, it's the opposite. The larger the dolphin species, the longer we can expect it to live if everything's going right. So the killer whale or the orca is the largest dolphin species, so it's expected to live the longest. Female orcas in some parts of the world can live 80 to 90 years. Some have crossed the 100 year mark. Also named a whale, but a dolphin is the false killer whale. And these were commonly called blackfish by people who fished um, and weren't terribly interested in these and didn't know a lot about them. And so they can still kind of have that nickname. Um, the false killer whale has an extensive range, which you can see here in this map. And if you do the species account worksheet, this is the kind of thing that you wanna do for the species you choose. Color in where that species would normally be found, naturally be found. So you can see the false killer whale has quite an extensive range, but scientists are still learning quite a bit about them. Um, this species can grow to be about 20 feet long or about six meters, and males tend to be a little bit longer than females. So sticking with these whales for a little bit more, there's also a pygmy killer whale. Uh, this dolphin is less than half the size of that false killer whale, and we know even less about it. It does have a range in temperate and tropical waters in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Oceans. And young pygmy killer whales, they can be really difficult to tell apart from young false killer whales and young melon-headed whales. Pygmy killer whales tend to be in groups of less than 50 individuals, but sometimes groups have been seen where there have been more than 100 individuals in the group. We'll do one more of these whale dolphins, the pilot whale. There are actually two types of pilot whales, short-finned and long-finned. And as the song told you, um, this is actually a common name that makes sense. Um, Long-finned pilot whales have very long pectoral fins. Those are the fins on the side of their bodies. Short-finned pilot whale has, you guessed it, shorter pectoral fins. Um, and you can see in this map here, let me get this to come up, um, there's a little bit of overlap in where the two species spend their time. But generally speaking, the long finned pilot whales like the cold water and the short fin like the more temperate and tropical waters. So if boaters are going between the Bahamas and Florida and they come and tell me that they saw pilot whales, they very well may have, and they probably saw short finned pilot whales. So, Thinking about Bimini and DCP's other research, what three species does DCP study? Here you can see me recording uh, some data, getting some data on this common bottlenose dolphin. So we'll talk about that species first. Here's a common bottlenose dolphin uh, photographed off the coast of Bimini. And this is probably the most well-known species, right? Uh, lots of people have seen bottlenose dolphins in aquariums, on TV, even in the wild. And scientists have been successfully studying this species for decades, in part because they're found in many, many parts of the ocean, including close to shore. And so the fact that they're close to shore, lots of places in the world, it gives scientists a lot of opportunities to observe them. But that doesn't mean studying a wild animal in the ocean is ever actually easy. But DCP also studies Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphin. Here you can see that same DCP big green camera recording some Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins off the coast of Mikura Island in Japan. This is actually a different species, though it's often just referred to as a bottlenose dolphin. So when you're reading about dolphin science, you wanna take a moment to double check which bottlenose species 
are you reading about? And then my favorite, I'm biased, I have to call them my favorite, the Atlantic spotted dolphin. Um, along with the common bottlenose dolphin, this is the species that DCP studies here in Bimini, the Bahamas. They're smaller than the bottlenose, but I bet you can guess where they live. The Atlantic Ocean. And I bet you can guess what they look like. They're spotted. Um, they indeed do have spots, but they're actually born without their spots. So they, when they're young, they look very much like a bottlenose dolphin calf. But then around age three or four, they start to develop their spots and then they get more and more spots throughout their whole life until they're an adult like this and they're just covered in spots. This is helpful to scientists because it helps us know how old they might be and it also allows us to recognize individuals. So if you haven't already seen it and you're interested in how we use photo ID to keep track of individuals and why we even bother, um, you should check out our dolphin lesson on photo ID, which is on our website and on our YouTube channel. Now, another spotted dolphin that we don't study is the pantropical spotted dolphin. It's very similar to an Atlantic spotted dolphin, um, but it's actually found in the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. Um, it tends to have this more distinct color line here, this caping here. They tend to prefer deeper water. They're often in larger groups than their Atlantic spotted dolphin counterparts. Um, and so like pilot whales, I hear boaters who are going between Florida and the Bahamas say, oh, we were right in the middle of the Gulf Stream and we saw spotted dolphins. They very well may have, and they were probably pantropical spotted dolphins. There is overlap in the Atlantic Ocean between the pantropical and the Atlantic spotteds, but the pantropical spotteds don't come into the shallow water close to Bimini, and that's where DCP goes to study the Atlantic spotted dolphins. Now, if you're doing your species account now or later, this is another way to help describe how long an animal is. So you can have an actual measurement and sometimes they make an illustration compared to an adult human to help you be able to visualize their size compared to us. So here you have a pantropical spotted relative to an adult scuba diver. Next quiz question. What is the smallest dolphin species? Hmm, we know the biggest is the orca, so who is the smallest? Is it the Rizzo's dolphin, spinner dolphin, Hector's dolphin, or the striped dolphin? Any guesses? You can talk to whoever's in the room with you. The smallest dolphin species is the Hector's dolphin. Here's a nice photo of a Hector's dolphin. This little an endangered dolphin is found only in New Zealand. And there are actually considered to be two subspecies, one that is near the South Island and one that is near the North Island. The main threats to this endangered dolphin are humans. So shipping lanes, humans overfishing the resources that the Hector's dolphin needs, and pollution. And in this area, that pollution is often in the form of runoff from farming and forestry. These dolphins like to spend a lot of their time close to shore in relatively shallow water. So say less than 100 meters, 300 feet. And they like to eat small fish and squid. So if Hector's is, the, is endangered and it's the smallest, what is the most endangered dolphin? It's not the Hector's. Is it the Atlantic humpback dolphin, the Chilean dolphin, hourglass dolphin, or the dusky dolphin? Guesses? It's the Atlantic humpback dolphin. And it is important to distinguish that when talking about their status, it is the Atlantic species that is the most endangered because there are several species. So we'll talk about a few of those now. Um, and even I think in this talk, I managed to write it two different ways. The humpback dolphin 
is sometimes put with a hyphen, humpback. Sometimes it's humpback. Sometimes it has an ED, humpbacked. It's just different people in different parts of the world using a common name slightly differently. So the Atlantic humpback dolphin, think you can guess what ocean it lives in? That's right, the Atlantic Ocean. But if you look at this range map, you might not even be able to see where in the Atlantic Ocean it lives. Did they forget to draw it? All of this Atlantic Ocean and the Atlantic humpback dolphin just uses this shoreline of Western Africa. It's not a lot of habitat to choose from. The species is considered critically endangered, which is the listing right before extinct in the wild. There are thought to be only about 1,500 individual adults left. Um, and while they are considered part of that 37 oceanic dolphin species, they actually do make use of uh, river deltas and estuaries and basins along the coastline here. The Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin is a separate species and it's doing better, but it is still listed as vulnerable, which is the classification right before endangered. It's a relatively well studied um, and it has two subspecies, Chinese and Taiwanese humpback dolphin. And they're probably the most famous for this wild pink and gray color coloration. Um, and that amount of pink can vary a lot by individual. And they're actually dark gray when they're born. And then the Australian humpback dolphin, the last of the humpback dolphins that we'll talk about today. This humpback species is found close to the um, northern coast of Australia and also on the south and uh, west of Papua New Guinea. They also go upstream in rivers. So they spend, they're an ocean dolphin, but they do go up rivers. And it's vulnerable as well in terms of how many are still on the earth. Uh, there are probably only about 10,000 adults thought to be around. And all of their threats come from human actions. So understanding the human impacts and then knowing which ways we can change the human behavior is the key to these species' survivals. Um, they appear to be opportunistic feeding feeders. And what that means is they're not super specialized. So they don't only eat one or two different things. They eat a wide variety of fish from small fish that are on the sand to some larger fish that swim uh, closer to the surface. So these are just a some of those 37 uh, oceanic dolphin species. There are many more. So if you are interested in doing the species account worksheet or just learning more, there's no shortage of homework. And then before we say goodbye, um, I wanted to tease you a little bit with at least one river dolphin, the Amazon river dolphin. Um, this is not included in that 37 uh, species, but I wanted to leave you with a little info about this as we're hoping to have a dolphin lesson on the Amazon River dolphin um, sometime this spring. So it's an elusive, nearly blind, has a super long rostrum. I think you could guess where the Amazon River dolphin lives. Um, and it is also an endangered dolphin. So hopefully the more we can learn about these animals and the more we can share the information with other people, we will inspire their conservation. So we hope that you enjoyed this talk, whether you listened live or to a recording. And if you want to catch more recordings, you can head straight to dolphincommunicationproject.org. Look under that education tab, you'll find the webinar section and you can find all of our recordings as well as upcoming schedule. Um, we have two types of webinars. Our deep dives tend to be a bit more in-depth, a bit more advanced, but all are welcome. And those are generally the second and fourth Thursdays each month at 1 p.m. Eastern. But next Thursday, the 11th of March, it's actually at 11 a.m. Eastern. So we have a different time next week. And then we have these dolphin lessons that are generally geared, are generally the first and third Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern. And of course, if that 
doesn't give you enough dolphin information, we have our podcast, The Dolphin Pod, and you can get that at dolphincommunicationproject.org or wherever you get your podcasts. And the last reminder about those kids' science activities, also under the education tab of our website, and free to download, share, use in a classroom, however they can be of use, we're happy for them to get out. And if you've been inspired by this discussion of lots of dolphin species, one of those free PDF activities is a word jumble. Um, so you can try and unscramble all these dolphin species and find the answer to our little riddle. So with that, I thank you for your time. Uh, again, whether you're listening live or the recording, uh, we hope that you enjoyed it. And we hope maybe you'll consider supporting DCP in our work. We have an Adopt a Wild Dolphin program. You can be a member and you can even join us in the field. Um, right now we have a few programs uh, that still have space this year as it becomes safer to travel. And that includes a Bimini Eco Tour research experience in July, July 11th to the 16th, 2021. You can find out more information on our website, shoot us an email with questions, and of course, stay in touch on social media. So with that, we'll see if we have any questions. Yes, we do. Great job, Kel, thank you so much. Um, we're wondering if there are any dolphin species that live in the Arctic. Good question. I actually wasn't sure because I think of dolphins as living, quote, in every ocean. But then all of the dolphins that I picked to talk about today had to do, uh, were certainly in northern and southern latitudes, but not creeping um, into the Arctic or southern oceans. So. The white-beaked uh, dolphin does creep into the Arctic Ocean in the summer. So it's not like really an Arctic dolphin because it's not equipped to deal with ice and things like a beluga or a narwhal. But when the ice recedes, it does go as far north as the Arctic. Um, and I have, for the Antarctic, which why not share that info, the hourglass dolphin is the dolphin that creeps uh, far enough south to be considered in the Southern Ocean. Awesome, thank you. Um, we're also wondering who are dolphins main predators? Mm. So if we're talking actual predator, um, their main natural predator is other sharks. Uh, or not other sharks, sharks. <laughs> uh, so there are a few different species of sharks that will prey on dolphins, that will use dolphins as a food source. Of course, the great white shark, um, tiger sharks, um, bull sharks, mako sharks, uh, maybe dusky sharks. And that's all part of the natural ocean world, the balance of the food chain. Um, there are also some orcas who prey on smaller dolphins as part of their natural food source, the natural food chain. And then there's us. Um, so while there are some parts of the world where they eat dolphins, so we would be considered a predator, um, we certainly harm more dolphins through our behavior than we do through um, consuming them. So whether that is shipping noise, um, boat strikes, pollution going out into the ocean, habitat destruction, us overfishing what the dolphins need to eat. Um, so while that's not the same as a predator, um, it is certainly what is pushing so many of these species closer to the endangered ranking. Thank you. And um, do any dolphins predate on each other? Do any dolphins eat other dolphins? Some of the orcas will. So there are different, uh, one of the things that you want to keep in mind about dolphin behavior is that aside from some of the very basic biology, all dolphins breathe air. Uh, all dolphins have live young, um, that kind of thing. All dolphins live in the water. Um, a lot of the behavior things are specific to a species in a certain geography. So while 
some orca will prey on small dolphins for uh, food for dinner. Um, not all orca will. And there's also some evidence of bottlenose dolphins um, going after harbor porpoises. Um, but I'm actually going to end my answer there because I don't think that that's predation and I haven't looked it up in a while. <laughs> um, I think that that is perhaps more practice for some other uh, behavioral things as opposed to for lunch. Great. So that was our last question about the presentation, but I was also wondering if you could give us just a really brief summary of what our adopted a wild dolphin program means. Sure. So you can adopt a wild dolphin. It does not mean you get to take your dolphin home with you, um, which is a good thing. You don't have to worry about having a bathtub big enough. Um, but what you can do is you can purchase an adoption online um, at our website. And we have two versions. We have an electronic version that's $30. And you can choose from about 20 different dolphins. Um, and you get a link to download a photo album of dolphin pictures, a DCP info booklet, and then a personalized adoption kit PDF. So it'll have a welcome letter, photograph, biography of your dolphin, and a certificate personalized to you that you've adopted that dolphin. And then for $35, um, you can order a hard copy. So where those materials are physically mailed to you, um, a physical certificate, a physical photograph. And the $35 includes shipping to a US address, um, kind of the basic not rushed shipping. You can also do expedited shipping and you can add international shipping um, to those orders. And that's our way of hopefully giving folks a product that they enjoy and are inspired to have. Um, it gets us some more education out there. And then all of those proceeds help support our research and education efforts. Awesome. Thank you very much for that and for your presentation. That's all for our questions today. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, and I hope you all have a great day wherever and whenever you're listening. Bye.